Welcome to Greensboro Beautiful's Parisian Promenade, the home edition. My name is John Wagner and I serve on the board of directors for Greensboro Beautiful. This is my wife, Ashley. Ashley and I volunteer for a number of Greensboro Beautiful projects. We're filming from the beautiful Tanger Family Bicentennial Garden where Greensboro Beautiful hosts the Parisian Promenade each year. As we mentioned in our first episode, it was necessary to cancel this year's event, so we've created a way for you to experience the event online from your homes. The Home Edition special, uh, showcases special garden areas, features excellent local artists and wonderful performers, provides a way for you to participate in an online garden quest, and we even have a virtual poodle parade. This is our second in a series of four 30-minute videos to bring this event to you at home. We invite you to join in and share your comments. And if you like what you see, please use the link at the bottom of the screen to show your support. Now during this episode, we'll answer three questions listed on this week's Garden Quest, our virtual scavenger hunt. You can go to our website at greensboroughbeautiful.org and click on the Garden Quest link provided for a list of questions. You, su you can submit your answers at the end of each episode. On this episode, we are so honored to have two very special guests to talk about today's featured garden areas. We'll begin with the newest addition to the garden, the Alexander Mangum Memorial Garden. This special garden was completed in April of this year and was made possible by generous donations from well-known Greensboro artist William Mangum and his wife Cynthia, as well as many friends of Alexander Mangum to honor his memory. The design for the garden was graciously provided by landscape architect Randall Romey, also a member of Greensboro Beautiful Board of Directors. Joining us now to talk about this garden and its special meaning is Bill Mangum. Well, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here in this magnificent garden. Um, it's a very special place to me and our family as we reflect about Alexander, our son. Uh, Greensboro has blessed us in exponential ways and Alexander always loved coming here as sort of a, a way of escaping. And that's what I love about the Bicentennial Garden and uh, there's so many little secret hideaways. Alexander graduated from Page High School, went to GTCC as well as Appalachian State, but he was born with the gift of music. And as a means of honoring him through his uh, unfortunate circumstances, he died of diabetes, we felt that could we create something that would be a getaway, a little sanctuary where people could converse. And behind us, we installed these beautiful wind chimes because of Alexander's love of music. Randall Romney, the architect, did a phenomenal job collaborating with us and we think what we have is an ideal place, a place that as you stroll through the gardens, if you're looking for an escape in the center city, I think it's one that will sort of beckon you to it. Uh, Alexander, more than anything, he loved music, but he loved people. And ideally what we have built here is sort of a conversation area where you could bring a friend, you could meet a stranger, and you could share some perspective about life. And uh, it's a great place to have humbleness. So we're delighted that this is an asset to the garden, and we hope that you'll take time in the near future to tour the Bicentennial Garden and to enjoy this memorial to our son, Alexander. Thank you, Bill. Alexander Mangum was a gifted musician and a saxophone player. He often played music in the Tanger family Bicentennial Garden, performing for guests as they strolled. Joining us now for a musical performance is one of Alexander's instructors, prominent Greensboro musician Wally West.
standing in the Nance Memorial Garden. This area is tucked away next to both the Alexander Mangum Garden and Camberley's Garden and features an interesting sculpture, a beautiful stone floor, and a bench. This area is the perfect intimate setting for quiet reflection and relaxation. Our first featured artist today is Shauna Ireland. Shauna is a photographer, an art lover, has enjoyed watching Greensboro's growth in the arts and its diversity over the years. She described Greensboro as a melting pot of many talented local artists and is proud to call Greensboro home. She joins us now to tell us more about her work. If you'd like to contact Shauna, use the link at the bottom of your screen. Welcome, Shauna. Hi, my name is Shauna Ireland. I'm a Greensboro resident for 
well, I won't give my age, but many, many years. Um, I actually started becoming an artist um, kind of by default. I worked for the post office for 17 years and had several injuries that required me to leave. So um, I've always loved photography. I've taken pictures since I was a kid. Um, my only bucket list item is to see all the national parks and so I've been trying to do that over the last 10-15 years um, and have at this point reached half. So while I've been um, out taking pictures of all the parks, um, I had a lot of friends and family that said I'd take great pictures and just started to think about selling some of my work. Um, I think my first show was a, a very small um, market that I think the booth was $15 and I maybe made $20 that day and I thought well this is a, a different life <laughs> from a regular salary but um, I don't know I've just really enjoyed it I I love meeting new people when I go to shows um, I've done the shows here at the gardens several years and often have people who come back every year looking for my booth and for my work um, I would say my process it just really involves always having a camera with me um, and that even means in my house my camera is usually always my phone is my camera a lot of times and it's always with me uh, my dogs are featured in a lot of my work um, so I end up getting a lot of funny uh, candid shots of them um, I care very much about showcasing the things that are important in Greensboro, which is why I've taken a lot for the Civil Rights Museum downtown. Um, and, you know, I guess what inspires me is seeing um, something from a, a different viewpoint. A lot of times I don't take the typical shot. Um, so I like a lot of, like, close-up pictures and, um, just trying to get a different perspective. So I have people often say things like uh, some of my pictures remind them of like this one I get a lot reminds them of their dad or something nostalgic. Um, so given the current COVID-19 situation since we're not able to be out in the public and doing shows I have shifted my work to an online uh, Etsy shop. Um, and I'm slowly getting all of my merchandise up there, so please visit that if you have an opportunity. And thank you very much. Thank you, Shauna. Our next featured garden area is Camberley's Garden. This garden is inspired by the mem memory of Camberley Holiday, daughter of former Greensboro Mayor Keith Holiday and his wife Cindy. And it honors the memory of children who have left, left us too soon. This garden was developed and made possible by Camberley's friends who helped raise the money to begin development. They, along with their families, also did much of the initial planning. Camberley had a real love for music and local metal sculptor, Jim Gallucci, created this music stand and bench for this garden. One really neat thing about the music on this stand is that there's a very well-known musical composition etched into the metal. It's Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. Joining us now to tell us more about this very special garden is Keith Holliday. Let me begin by saying how much I appreciate Greensboro Beautiful for giving us the opportunity to showcase this beautiful garden and all of Bicentennial Garden. You know, it is operated and owned by the city of Greensboro, but it's Greensboro Beautiful that really puts the spark and the energy and the leadership into creating this wonderful oasis for the citizens of Greensboro and our community. Camberley's Garden is a very special place, not just to my family and Camberley's friends as she was growing up, but I think to the overall community who sees this place as, a, as, a, as an opportunity to, to come relax and have peaceful feelings and good memories and reminiscing about loved ones, especially young children. Back in 2002, my family had this horrible crisis and we lost Camberley instantaneously. We were with her at the time. It was a, a brain aneurysm and um, she was so full of life and full of energy and love and talent. And we 
lost her in an instant. It took uh, so long for my wife and family to be able to hold our heads up. But one of the reasons that allowed that to happen was the friends and loved ones of Camberley, the Girl Scout Troop 859 who came to us some six months after her passing and said, we want to do a garden in her name. And we've, we've talked with the people at Greensboro Beautiful and they've allowed us to have a patch of land that quite frankly is full of, of, of woods and, and underbrush. And they said that if we'll take the time and effort to go in and raise the money to clear it out and create this garden that they would let us have it. Do you mind if we dedicate this to Camberley in her memory? My wife and I talked and we immediately said, no, we, we cannot let it be specifically for Camberley, but rather for so many young people who leave us early, leave us way too soon. We were thrilled, of course, to note that the friends felt this way and immediately they started raising money and families and parents came out and it was winter time, the snow was on the ground and they started clearing the land and um, making Saturday and Sunday afternoon work schedules. It was, uh, it was quite a sight and um, Campbell's mother and I were just so inspired by the love that was shown by these young people. At the time they were only 15 years, 16 years old. She was just getting ready to go into high school and since then, of course, the, the garden has, has matured and grown and as you look around on the papers and you see the young people's names and their dates of, of life, you, you realize that we are all blessed to have these children, but unfortunately, we know that some of them leave us too soon and too early. Campbell's Garden gives us that time to reflect and to remember. And I can tell you that it has done so much to help heal the parents and loved ones of these children. And I certainly encourage others to come out and experience the spirit that exists in this garden because it's here and it's, it's a special place. And I can't again thank Greensboro Beautiful and the city of Greensboro enough for allowing this opportunity and this oasis, as I call it, uh, for us to be able to escape and come out and enjoy the peaceful feeling of Camberley's garden. Thank you, Keith. Camberley was also an accomplished dancer. Joining us now for a very moving interpretive dance performance is Princess Johnson, director of Royal Expressions Contemporary Ballet.
Princess. Our next guest is artist, photographer, and landscape architect Nancy Spey. Nancy's paintings and photographs are inspired by the hope of instilling an appreciation of the natural world around us. She joins us now to tell us more about her work. If you'd like to contact Nancy, please use the link at the bottom of the screen. Hey Greensboro, I'm Nancy Say, and I'm excited that we're going to still have a virtual Parisian promenade this year. Um, and I wanted to just tell you a little bit about myself and how I got into um, my artwork. I, um, at a young age, was appreciative of plants and flowers. In fact, I have a newspaper clipping of me as a brownie Girl Scout planting marigolds. and. Uh, from there, I decided to become a landscape architect. So I've always really been interested in uh, plants and design and creating nice spaces for people. So in the last few years, um, I wanted to get a little more into the watercolor painting that I've been doing lately. And um, so I've been, been uh, trying to take my interest in the environment uh, plants, animals, birds, and that sort of thing, and try to capture things in the watercolor medium and capture them in a way that you might not see uh, with your own eye. Uh, so I try to look at things that uh, you might walk by and not even see as something beautiful. So I've been taking um, the watercolors and putting them on scarves, such as the one I'm wearing right here. So these are either photographs or watercolors that I've done. I'm making scarves and tote bags and even, even the um, uh, blouse here with uh, an image that I took here in the garden. So this particular blouse here is um, sporting an image that I took here in the garden and it's looking up from the bottom of one of the Japanese maples that you'll find here in the garden up towards the blue sky. So the, these are really nice and easy to wear and you can have a piece of art, a wearable piece of art. The, um, the tote bags that you're seeing here um, keep you from having to get a plastic bag when you go to the grocery. And this is just an up close shot of a really pretty coleus plant. So this uh, piece right here I did in the garden last year. There was a flower vendor that was standing next to me. And I said, oh, that's a great subject. So this is the original of that. I also take my work and put them on note cards so that if you're not in the market for a, a larger piece, you can afford a note card or you can um, get a pack of note cards that you can give as a gift or to someone else. So I, I like to have different ways that you can appreciate my artwork. Uh, I, I guess I also do um, prints. So I have a lot of prints here. Butterflies, birds, and that sort of thing. Um, and I just really, um, I thank you for taking a look at my work. Again, I'm Nancy Say. You can uh, check me out on my website at the link on the bottom of the image that you're seeing. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Now, before we go, we want to tell you how you can participate in this year's virtual poodle parade. Visit our website at greensborobeautiful.org, click on the Parisian Promenade Home Edition link, then click the link to the poodle parade entry form. As part of the final episode on June 28th, we'll feature a photo lineup of all of our entries. Your pet doesn't have to be a poodle to enter. And this year only, you can enter any pet whatever type of animal it is. After the episode has aired, we'll have a drawing from all the entries received and the winner will receive a gift, gift basket donated by All Pets Considered. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Parisian Promenade, the Home Edition, brought to you by Greensboro Beautiful. You can show your support by using the link at the bottom of the screen. Greensboro Beautiful makes this event possible with private donations from the community. Donations from people like you, who help bring these events to the community, as well as tree plantings, litter cleanups, and continued enhancements to each of Greensboro's four public gardens. Donations in any amount are truly appreciated. 
We'd also like to offer a special thanks to the Greensboro Regional Realtors Association for funding support, to 88.5 WFDD for providing promotional support for each of our garden events, and to the City of Greensboro for being part of this wonderful and unique partnership for the last 50 years. Be sure to join us for the next episode of Parisian Promenade, the Home Edition, next Sunday, June 21st at 2 p.m., where we'll showcase the Rock Garden and the Wildflower Trail, artists Christina Becker and Josh Hendry, music by Tony Lowe, and more answers to the Garden Quest virtual scavenger hunt. See you next time.